it is nearly Christmas. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Christmas. Um, first of all, I would like to say a massive thank you to everybody for getting us to over 2,000 subscribers. Whoop, whoop. The thank you I would like to say is approximately this large. Might even be bigger than that. You know, if I get to 3,000, I'm going to need longer arms. Uh, seriously, though, thank you very much. It's, a, uh, it's lovely, and I'm very happy. Um, as a reward, I've not done what I said I was going to do. <laughs> uh, I was supposed to finish my coat. I haven't, uh, because my sewing machine had to go in for a service this week, which means I have been bereft of a sewing machine for the entire week and have not had a clue what to do with myself. I have managed to do three hours work on my coat today, but quite frankly, that is not really enough for you to be interested. So I'm gonna bundle it all up, do it next week. You will have a proper reveal of the final coat. But what I've done instead is put together this little video, which is about herringbone stitch, which I showed in my last video as part of the how to stitch down a dart and make things nice and flat. Um, and I thought, actually, I've never shown how to do this in detail, um, and it's something I really use all the time. And so I thought it might be helpful for people out there around a refresher of how you use it, how you can use it, what its benefits are, what you need to watch out for, etc. So I've just done a little film of how to make it, uh, and next week we will get the big uh, coat reveal, with any luck, assuming there aren't any other weird squeaky noises coming out of my machine. Um, so yeah, that's it for this week. Um, I hope you're really well and the run up to Christmas is treating you okay and you're not too stressed. And I will see you again next week. Okay, so the first stitch that I want to um, show you is the herringbone stitch. I use this all the time in sewing and it's one of the first stitches I ever learnt because my mum taught me it when she was teaching me how to take up um, trousers and skirts and things and how to hand hem which is one of its most common uses but actually it's useful for lots and lots of different reasons um, and it's a really versatile stitch that is incredibly um, valuable in a sewer's collection so um, I'm going to show you how to do it and then some examples of how it can be used the first one I'm just going to show you is a pair of trousers that I discovered I actually took up um, using herringbone stitch this is the inside edge of the hem and you can see that because these are shop bought this um, edge here has been overlocked, but you can hopefully see in brown, if I just turn it like this, that's the hand herringbone stitch, this one that's running up and down along here. And it's really useful for lots of reasons, as I mentioned. One is that it allows you to secure two surfaces, but still allow movement between them. So if you, this can still sort of move and it's got a bit of wiggle in it, which is really helpful for things like hems, where obviously they move around when you walk and you don't want it so tight that they kind of lock together and it puckers. The other is that on the other side of the stitch it's practically invisible which is one of the reasons you use it for hemming where you don't want any visible stitches on this outside edge. So it's really helpful for anything where you don't want stitches visible on one side but you don't mind if they're visible on the other. Now this is a wool uh, mix fabric so it's it's fairly thick which means it's easier to do this and have almost zero uh, stitches showing on the outside. You should be able to see that at this point here, where it actually connects to the bottom outer edge, the stitch is absolutely tiny. You're really picking up one or two threads, if that, with this bit of the stitch, and this bit is much bigger. So this is your anchoring point where the strength is. This is the point where you don't want to show, so you pick up a very little amount. And that's what makes it great for doing this sort of work where you can have a lot of very small anchors on one side but it means that on the other side you can't see it. So I have this sample of um, wool. Imagine this is the inside of a garment so this is the say this is the hem of something this is your bottom edge this is the finished edge of the hem that will sit um, at the bottom of the garment this is the inside and you've rolled it up to finish it. Now obviously this edge here is raw and could fray, so really you would finish this. I haven't done that for just demonstration purposes because I didn't have time, but ideally you would you would make sure that you've got a nice clean edge there. You'd also make sure it's straight. Now with herringbone, um, because you are working almost against the direction of your sewing, it's, you have to start at a slightly counterintuitive place. So I've got my needle and thread. I'm using orange just so it's really easy for you to see. You would obviously use something that 
is matching and I've threaded my needle and I've got a knot at the end of the thread if you aren't sure how to do that or you're not confident I've got two other videos on my channel I'll link to in the comments um, below so you can work out both how you um, thread a needle and how you can knot your thread really easily without fiddling about endlessly trying to tie knots in various loops of thread so you come through the back of your bottom layer basically just to hide this uh, raw edge you can the knot just here you might not be able to see it um, you come under there and you can tuck this out of the way or you can trim it off it doesn't really matter but it just means you've got a nice neat finish and then I am I so um, right-handed so I'm showing you this right-handed and what you want to do is sew in the opposite direction to the direction you're going so I'm sewing from this end all the way along to this end so, but I want my the pointy end of my needle pointing in the opposite direction so my needle is going in right to left and you want to pick up just a few threads of this um, top section you don't want to go through to the back because if you do that you'll be able to see it so you literally just want to pick up enough that you've got a tiny anchor but it can be really small um, and then pull your work your um, your thread through try not to get it hooked over your pins and you end up with a slanty stitch like that then you're coming back across and doing the same thing in the same direction but in your bottom uh, layer and here you can take a much bigger stitch because you've got a double layer of fabric so you can go all the way through this one and the idea is that you're creating quite a lot of anchor points so that you're spreading the stress on the thread um, which means that you should be anchoring quite heavily into this because this is actually where most of the strain is being taken up if you like but you pull pull that through make sure your needle goes behind this thread you don't want it in front because you're going to end up with a loop if you do that so make sure it's behind and just pull it through like that and then you've got a little hat, if you like. It's gone up like that, across like that, and then back on itself. And then you want to do exactly the same thing so that you pick up a few threads. Again, I'm not going through to the back, pointing opposite direction to the one I'm going in. And you create this little pattern. If you keep going, I'll just do a few so you can start to see how it builds up because it's a bit easier then. of little, um, you can see why they call it herringbone, it's got that, looks a little bit like the herringbone fabric you get. Um, and you just keep doing that, crossing over yourself, keep pointing in the same direction, until you've got a nice row of stitches like this. And on the other side, you'll see it's completely invisible, no orange there at all. In terms of positioning, um, try and make sure that your stitches are quite close to this edge. So the ones running along the bottom in your double layer of fabric are as close to that edge as you can make it. You don't want too much depth because then you start getting tug up and down and really you don't want that. You sort of want it to go side to side. So try and keep them nice and narrow like this. Um, and I always err on the side of having more stitches rather than fewer. But other people, there are different schools of thought. Some people do their herringbones a lot wider than this. And if I'm in a hurry or I'm doing something um, where I'm not kind of trying to do it as carefully as this to show you, I might space them out. But the bigger you make them, obviously, the looser your stitch will be, if I show you that, actually. So if I decide that I'm going to do them sort of double the size that I have been doing them, and I come all the way over here, which is absolutely fine, by the way. It's completely up to you how you do this. And I do one like that, and then another one down here. you're starting to get the risk that you've not got quite enough um, stability across this stitch and this can, you're pulling quite a distance on this little lap loop here so this is going to pull and this is going to pull and that could cause this to get a bit sort of lumpy bumpy so I recommend doing it smaller if you can um, it just makes it more secure the more stitches you have this, the more secure your hem is going to be um, the other quite good tip that I learned is every... I don't know, maybe f sort of seven of these humps, so if you imagine this is a little mountain range, or the back of a dinosaur, um, every sort of seven or so of those, when you're in, um, imagine I've done seven, when you're in your bottom layer, it's sometimes just worth doing a double stitch here. So you do one like I have done, but rather than going straight up to the top again, just do a little anchoring stitch. Um, if you go twice around like that, and then carry on, so then you do your next one like this. 
etc. Then it means that if something, you catch this on a heel or it snaps or whatever, for whatever reason, the whole of your hem isn't going to unravel because you've got an anchor point here. It will only unravel to that point, which means you don't have to go back around and do the whole thing again, which trust me, is a good thing. So that is just a very basic herringbone stitch. Really handy, very useful, um, and really quite simple to do. The only weird bit of it is that you're you're having to create this cross, so you're having to sort of cross over yourself, obviously. Anyway, I hope you found that useful um, and enjoy this video, and I will be back next week, hopefully with more updates on the coat.